Nigeria's Ministry of Solid Minerals Development announced the revocation on Tuesday, stating that it was necessary to clean up the mining sector and improve its international competitiveness. The revoked licenses were previously held by companies that had failed to pay their annual fees of 1,500 naira per cadastral unit. The ministry had issued earlier warnings to 2,213 companies about their non-compliance, but only 580 responded and paid their fees. The ministry also said that the revocation of the licenses will free up space for new investors who are willing to invest in the mining sector. It also warned that those whose licenses have been revoked must vacate their mining sites immediately or face being apprehended by security agencies. Now to get a clearer perspective on this, we're now joined by Professor Olatunji S. Akiadi. He is the National President, Nigerian Mining and Geosciences Society. Thank you so much, Professor Olatunji, for your time with us. Thanks for joining us. Uh, good evening. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Uh, now, Prof, the Minister of Solid Minerals uh, Development, Dele Alake, said the licenses of these mineral title holders were revoked because of their failure to pay the mandatory annual services fee, which is 1,500 naira per cadastral unit. Are there any means of making these firms pay what they owe to Nigeria? Yeah. <laughs> Usually, there is a request made by the mining cadastral office to the 14 companies. And if you don't meet the uh, deadline as stipulated in the Mining Act, you lose your license. It's as simple as ABC. They all know the rules. So non-compliance for most of them is intentional. Really. So I think the best thing is also actually to implement the rule. Most often we make rules in the country without information. That has allowed impunity to have its way over, over time. When you have a rule, you have a law, the best thing to, have, to ensure orderliness, to ensure that the law is fully implemented. So kudos to MCO and the ministry for what they have done. That's just the law. Uh, getting them to pay, uh, the, they, have, they have paid the penalty, they have lost their license. So uh, it's difficult to get somebody who has refused to pay when they have the license get them to pay that when they don't have the license. So I think that is done. Okay, so that means we can say that this is part of the reform that is being done in the sector. Ah, uh, yes, and um, I don't know. Is this is a routine practice by the Mani Cadastral Office. Uh, this is not the first time licenses will be revoked. The Mani Cadastral Office under the leadership of the current uh, EG has been very proactive in ensuring that the policy of uh, audit and use it, which is one of the cardinal policy of the uh, of the mining cadastral office is, is implemented is that if you have a license, whatever category of license you have, you must use it. If you don't use it, you lose it. Because there are a lot of speculators out there who gain these licenses, who are not using it for anything, but they are going from one place to the other, shopping for investors into things that they have not even done. They are not supposed to get the license if you don't have the, uh, the well without in the first place to even do the work. So most of the people who have lost these licenses, I'm sure you, you, you investigate very well. And there are, there are actually people who are not serious with, uh, with uh, having any mining mindset, so to say, but more or less uh, speculators. You can see from what the minister said, after the request was made, over 500 people paid up. It shows that a significant amount of people who knew that they were in default, and who knew they have business interest in the sector, have paid up. So that's the way it should be. So it's a routine exercise being carried out by the mining cadastral office. But you know, this is the first time the current minister will be doing it. So uh, it's also good he's doing it early in his, uh, in his tenure as minister. Okay, now, Professor Latunji, um, another challenge is the mining firms in Nigeria have been accused of not having a physical address or a corporate headquarters. If this is true, how can this be corrected? I, I didn't get the question. The so, uh, companies are... so the, the mining firms in Nigeria, people have said that they do not have a physical address or even a corporate headquarters. 
you know, how true is that? Mm. And if it is true, how can that be corrected? Uh, that is actually even criminal in the first instance because for you to apply for a mining license or a mining lease or an exploration license or a small medium scale mining, you must be registered with the Corporate Affairs Commission. And to be registered with the Corporate Affairs Commission, you need an address. And if you don't provide that address, the Corporate Affairs Commission will not register you. So uh, all mining companies that have mining licenses have addresses. Then the question is, are those addresses really addresses set up to take charge of the mining businesses they are uh, applied to do? Uh, that, I'm sure, is not the case in, in many of these instances. And as I said earlier, quite a number of people branch into the sector because of these uh, good stories they had about the profitability of the sector. But many of them have no clue as to how the sector actually operates. And unfortunately, it's actually dragging back the sector rather than making it to develop. Because when you have most of the licenses in the hands of speculators, the real big players, the real serious-minded individuals cannot come in because they are they took up the space and it's difficult. So it is important, as I said earlier, that this exercise is done regularly and make sure that only those who are seriously minded, those who have business plans to execute, those who have the financial wherewithal to go into mining are in the sector. Otherwise, we we'll just uh, be going round and round the circle uh, every time. So for me, they have addresses. They are, those addresses may not necessarily be addresses that have been set up for the mining activities because it's not possible for you to have a company registered without an address. Even if it is your home address, it's an address. You can run, you can run a business from your house. After all, most of the successful businesses of the world today started from garages of their parents. So it's not a big deal about having physical uh, uh, address per se, but having concrete plan on what to do when you have the mining license or mining legal fees. All right, uh, Professor Olatunji Akiade, thank you so much for joining us, National President of Nigerian Mining and Geosciences Society. We appreciate your time with us on the news. Thank you very much.